Hello and welcome back to the Lair of Centipedes. Today it's time for another reaction video and we're taking a break from the spiders this time because this one is going to be about centipedes. Centipedes are gross, angry, and malevolent creatures filled with venom and a desire to eat anything and everything they come across. Ah yes, opportunistically devouring other living things you come across in the wild makes you malevolent. It's totally not like every predatory animal in existence does exactly that. On an unrelated note, sorry if you can hear my feeder crickets in the background. They just won't shut up. In some cases, finding them will be the last thing you ever do. One look at these guys and you'll be paranoid of them slithering their way into your ear. Whoa, 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 getting really creepy really fast there. I don't know about you, but there is nothing about my anal opening that would be particularly attractive to a centipede. And I'm sure that applies to most other humans as well. Also, nothing says quality content like being too lazy to use your own damn voice for narration. Here are some scary facts about centipedes crawling around the earth right now. 8. Scolopendra morsitans has literally endangered other species. Scolopendra. Yeah, that kind of pronunciation is what you're going to expect when you're using auto-read. Seriously, f*** this narration and everything about it. Lucky for most, it's only native to Australia. Scolopendra morsitans is indeed an Australian native, but it is not endemic here. It is also found in Africa and parts of the Asian Pacific regions. And while it has established itself as an invasive species in a couple of areas, across the vast majority of its range, it is not. 7. Scolopendra polymorpha is a common desert horror. I feel like this would be a good time to remind you that the title of this video is the top 8 biggest centipedes in the world. And Scolopendra polymorpha and morsitans, while they're by no means small, are certainly nowhere near the top 8. 6. Scolopendra galapagoensis scared the hell out of Charles Darwin. Why do I feel like the makers of this video couldn't tell which centipede was which in the footage they're using? Because they seem to be just flipping back and forth between the actual Scolopendra galapagoensis and a Scolopendra hardwickii, which is the orange and black one. I guess, you know, 50-50 chance of getting it right, but you know, screw it, put them both in. It has a large brain for an insect. Alright, here's some basic taxonomy. Centipedes are myriapods, not insects. However, like insects, they belong to the clade mandibulata alongside crustaceans and other non-insect hexapods such as springtails. 5. The Scolopendra cingulata is an eating machine. While centipedes are known for their aggressive behavior, this little guy takes it to a whole new level. In a world where Scolopendra dehani exists, why would you single out Scolopendra cingulata as a centipede that is especially aggressive? Scolopendra cingulata is in fact considered to be quite a mellow-tempered centipede. And just like Scolopendra morsitans and polymorpha, it definitely isn't one of the biggest centipedes on Earth, so it has no place in this list. 4. Scolopendra giganta is the largest centipede in the world. The centipede shown in this video here is not Scolopendra gigantea, it is an undescribed centipede species that is nicknamed white legs in the hobby. However, this is one of the more excusable of this video's innumerable mistakes, as Scolopendra species white legs is very frequently mislabeled as gigantea. Also, if it's the biggest centipede in the world, and this is a list counting the biggest centipedes in the world, why isn't it in first place? 3. The Scolopendra subspinipes is so poisonous it's a danger to your children. Uh, two things that trigger me in the same sentence. First things first, that is Scolopendra dehani, not subspinipes. Dehani was originally considered a subspinipes subspecies, but is now regarded as a separate species. And also, venomous. Venomous, not poisonous. Venom is injected, poison is ingested. I can't tell you how many times I have to correct people on that one. With a black body and orange legs. Colour is generally considered to be a very unreliable way to identify Scolopendron species because there is often significant intraspecific variation. In other words, variation between individuals of the same species, especially ones from different locations. 
If it wasn't scary enough, it can grow to be a foot long and live 10 long years. There are no reliable records of Scolopendra subspinnipeds getting anywhere close to that size. Usually they're less than 20 centimeters. Although Scolopendra de Harney is significantly bigger, can get to well over 20 centimeters, and there was one exceptional specimen recorded at 32 centimeters body length. As a side note, what about having a long lifespan is scary? I mean, how is that relevant at all? Two. Scolopendra heroes can kill you just by walking on you. Scolopendra can kill. <laughs> yeah, there goes the Jimmy Carr laugh again. My god, this is the most bullshit I've heard since I binge watched an entire season of Would I Lie to You? Like, between this video and Coyote Peterson, Scolopendra Heroes really doesn't get a break, does it? There's a story about an officer in the Confederate Army that woke up to one of these things crawling all over him. He soon fell into a fit of pain and convulsions. He died two days later. There's a story. There is also a story about two hobbits who undertook a long and perilous journey to throw an evil ring into a volcano. That does not mean it happened. One. Scolopendra cataractor can follow you into the water. Of course, centipedes have absolutely no reason at all to pursue a human, and quite frankly, they have a hundred reasons to run in the opposite direction. Next time you're in lab. Jeepers! That jump scare was ten times, no, more than ten times scarier than any centipede I have ever seen, Azog included. But yeah, that is another reaction video done. And I'll admit, I feel pretty satisfied when I'm doing these because I'm honestly staggered with the massive amount of misinformation that just spreads all over the internet these days and so many people believe it and it doesn't help that many of these videos seem to be directed towards younger viewers which are generally the more gullible ones, no offence. And I think it's honestly horrible to just tell these lies to people just so you can get views by playing off their fears. Ah oh, well, at least it gives me a chance to have some comedy and let go a bit of anger as well. So thank you all very much for watching, that's it from me and I'll see you again very soon. Oh, and also feel free to check out some of my other videos and um, yeah, you can subscribe if you want. Oh well, goodbye.